Welcome to ISTV English News. I'm Dhanya. Let's take a look at the top stories first. Except for some sporadic incidents, polling in outer Manipur parliamentary constituency peaceful so far. And democracy will be really meaningful when voters can cast their votes according to democratic norms without any squabbles, affirms Chief Minister O. Ibobi. The news in detail. Polling in the Outer Manipur Assembly constituency in the first phase of the 16th Lok Sabha elections was relatively peaceful except for some sporadic incidents here and there today. The polling started at 7 a.m. in 28 assembly segments in the outer constituency where 9,11,699 voters were supposed to cast their votes. As per reports received by ISTV News till afternoon, about 50% voting was recorded. Around 12.20 p.m., some unidentified persons caused some damages on the electronic voting machine. However, the EVM was repaired soon and the voting continued. Meanwhile, some unidentified persons suspected to be cadres of an armed group reportedly made a vain attempt to capture the polling booth at 50 by 8 polling station at Kangchuk. The security personnel drove the mob away from the place. Meanwhile, our staff reporter A.C. Arun reports from Chandel district. <laughs> In Ukral district, the polling went on smoothly under heavy security arrangements. Till afternoon, the recorded voting percentage was 50%. Here is a report from our Ukral district correspondent, Thotsang Saiza. In Senapati district also, the polling was reported peaceful. In the early hours of the polling, some people allegedly tried to threaten the voters to cast their votes for the candidate of NPF. However, reinforcement of security personnel rushed to the place and brought the situation under control. Our reporter Nabakumar, who has been covering the polling in the district since morning, filed this report from the district headquarters. <laughs>
Similarly, the polling in Tamenglong district and Jiribam in Imphal West district was reportedly peaceful. A bomb tore through a bustling fruit and vegetable market in Islamabad on Wednesday, killing at least 20 people, police said, the latest violence to hit government peace talks with the Taliban. The blast took place around 8 a.m., 3 hours GMT, at the wholesale market close to the Pakistani capital's twin city Rawalpindi, as hundreds of grocers and sellers gathered to trade. The bombing, the deadliest to hit Islamabad since a huge truck bomb at the Marriott Hotel in 2008, left a 1.5-meter, 5-foot diameter crater at the site, which was littered with body parts and guava fruits drenched in blood, an AFP reporter at the scene said. The attack comes as the government tries to negotiate an end to the tehreek e taliban pakistans TTP campaign of violence. Talks began between government and TTP intermediaries in February, but more than 160 people have been killed in attacks since the start of the process, leading many to question its worth. Australian ship Ocean Shield has detected two more signals in the search for missing Malaysian flight MH370, a senior official said on Wednesday. Ocean Shield has been able to reacquire the signals on two more occasions, late yesterday afternoon and later last night, said Angus Houston, head of the Joint Agency Coordination Center. Ocean Shield has now detected four transmissions, he said, as searchers try to pinpoint wreckage from the Boeing 777 that disappeared on March 8 with 239 people on board. The last two transmissions were picked up on Tuesday. The first lasted 5 minutes and 32 seconds and the second approximately 7 minutes. 
He told a press conference that experts analyzing the first two pulse signals detected by an Australian ship earlier this week believe they are consistent with a flight data recorder. They believe the signals to be consistent with the specification and description of a flight data recorder, Houston said. The retired air marshal said he was confident the hunt was now in the right area, but a sighting of wreckage was needed to be certain. Congress President Sonia Gandhi today targeted the BJP and its prime ministerial candidate Narendra Modi with an apparent reference to Snoop Gate or the alleged spying on a young woman by Gujarat police officers in 2009. This is the same BJP that gives many lectures on religion and ethics. You have witnessed how the personal lives of women were played with in their rule and how much shame it led to across the country, Sonia Gandhi said at a rally in Kolar, Karnataka, without naming Modi. Karnataka will vote on April 17 in round 5 of the nine-phase polling for the national election that ends on May 12. The Snoop Gate scandal surfaced when a senior Gujarat police officer submitted tapes of secretly recorded phone conversations in 2009 to the CBI. The conversations allegedly indicate that the woman was being tailed at the instructions of a sahib or big boss. The Congress has alleged that this man is Mr. Modi, who is the chief minister of Gujarat. A tea vendor and a member of the city's erstwhile royal family are among the five people who proposed Narendra Modi's name as the BJP's prime ministerial candidate filed his nomination papers today as the party's candidate from Vadodara in Gujarat. Mr. Modi turned his drive down the four-kilometer route from Kirti Stamp to the district collector's office into a massive road show. Thousands of supporters in saffron Gandhi caps and Modi masks and holding big cutouts of the BJP's lotus symbol and many party flags lined the stretch and crowded Modi's open jeep. Mr. Modi in a flame red jacket stood in the jeep waving to the crowds. Thousands of police personnel have been deployed in the city today. At the collectorate, Kiran Mahida, a tea seller, proposed Mr. Modi's candidacy. Six of the seven assembly segments in Vadodara are held by the BJP. The seventh was won by an independent who joined, who soon joined the BJP fold. Mr. Modi is also contesting a second seat, Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh. Vadodara votes on April 30. Mangal Yan, India's maiden mission to Mars, crossed the halfway mark of its incredible journey today morning at 9.50 a.m. Mangal Yan Mars craft, which was launched on November 5, 2013 from the Sriharikota spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, has travelled nearly 337.5 million kilometre till now. It is expected to rendezvous with the Red Planet on September 24, 2014, when it will become the farthest any Indian object has ever travelled. At Rs 450 crore, India's Mars mission is the cheapest interplanetary mission ever undertaken. Mangalyaan aims to look for signs of life on Mars. It also aspires to fulfill India's covert desire to beat China in the race to the Red Planet. The mission seems to be on track thanks to the nature of planetary forces and the precise orbit injection by the Indian Space Research Organization. A team comprising nearly 500 ISRO scientists had worked tirelessly to ensure that Mangalyaan was ready for its launch within a record 15 months. Of the 51 missions to Mars launched from across the world till date, 27 have failed so far. If Mangalyaan manages to reach Mars, India will become the first country to achieve the enviable feat on a spacecraft's maiden flight. A fish can containing some gelatin sticks and some nails was found lying at a place about 200 meters away from the house of Congress candidate for the Inner Manipur Parliamentary Constituency at Joypur Kunau at Kumbong under the jurisdiction of Patsoi Police Station at about 11.30 a.m. today. The explosive was found by some local people. Police came and picked up the explosive and took it away. Flag hoisting ceremony for Sarang Tem Manaubi, candidate in the inner parliamentary constituency of Trinamul Congress, was held today at his house at Thongju Part 2. Leaders of the party, MLA Dr. I. Ibohalbi, T. H. Shamkumar, office bearers, and members took part in the ceremony. Addressing the gathering, MLA Shamkumar said, Trinamul Congress is a party which stands for truth without the influence of money. In this Lok Sabha election, Congress, BJP, CPI, etc. are throwing stones against each other. Trinamul Congress, which will be successful in the election, is not a part of them. 
The promise made by Chief Minister Okram Ibobi to give ministerial berth to the MLA which gets the maximum votes is a false promise. Dr. I. Ibohalbi said, the 16th Lok Sabha election is a very important election for the people of Manipur. There is a need to elect the most commanding candidate in this election. We should elect the candidate which can raise the various issues of Manipur in the parliament and shape policy for all the community living in the state. Parliament is a very important part Putoe, budget, budget, put on Matunga Magi, Shekla Wise, Kanara Koma Damsesida, Manipurgi, Kanaba Nomisais, the Delhi Manipurgi Kanaba, the Helki Kanaba, the Manipurgi Yogani, Rode, Breezy Kanaba, the Manipur Yogani, Ishingi Kanaba, the Manipur Yogani, Madam Shida, Akoi Degisa Kiba, Honorable MP Shida Saru Yabio, Nashi Yava Tianagra, Manipurgi Namta Noina, Kari Hapiri and the Kiano, which is the Karamba Project Pibiri, Karamba. Kari budget provision to Anba, priority money for cry the Piri. Hi, you see, a quick is a Piri by Shilin Oxing, Shina Putoki Gadamnev. Candidate Sarangte Manaubi avowed that the history of Manipur ranges 3,000 years back with border of 3,000 kilometers. But the government which has ruled the state for the past 53 years has shortened the border of the state by 3 kilometers. He is contesting the election with the conviction of saving Manipur. If he is successful, then he will save the status of women. Youth will not lose a drop of blood. He will take up steps to acquire the lost border of Manipur back. I if I pull it from my listening home, some of Manipur territory, NGO Mangbear, Hairi Bersi, Aigi Pandamne, Masik, Kananaki Honapada, Arubanate, Kango, Kango, the country drugs, Akango Poinati, Akango Karanati, how home planning I lay, have his own hygiene. And now let's take a look at the top stories once again. Except for some sporadic incidents, polling in outer Manipur parliamentary constituency peaceful so far. And democracy will be really meaningful when voters can cast their votes according to democratic norms without any squabbles, affirms Chief Minister O. Ibobi. Thanks for joining us and for more updates, do stay tuned.